known by the church. Matter of fact, the, the, one of the attitudes was something were really wrong was the thought and the idea about the verse. It was, it was the idea that they, had, they were puffed up, that they were glorying in this situation. And that kind of a strange thought. Why in the world would somebody be glorying in this thing, puffed up? What is, what's up with that? Except for the idea, I heard one commentator, I read one commentator, and they made the statement of the idea that puffed up in the sense of the idea, well, that's them, amen. I, I have nothing to do with that situation as far as that goes. And therefore, the pride, if you will, and the arrogance of the individuals was glad to think to them, well, I, I'm better than them. But in other words, the idea of not taking care of it, not handling it. Then the thought, if you will, goes a little bit further. The idea about glorying in this thing? Could it be the idea that there was glory in the idea that this, this was somebody that was a, permanent, a person of prominence? Somehow or another, and they were doing this thing, we're going to let it slip, we're going to let it slide because of who it was. That was another commentator's statement, if you will, about that thing. Just show you, I'd throw that out there so that you know the verse, some of the thoughts behind that. I bet, let me handle the idea. Those two attitudes weren't helping. If you know that, say amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, if we got up in the parking lot, <laughs> we got up in the parking lot, you're going to have to honk at least. <laughs> so if you're going to say amen, at least honk. That or who's going to do the windshield wipers, just in case. So you go, bro. Yeah, you go. You go. Or the, if you ever if say, but I'm a quiet child, but just flash your lights. Okay, but well, come on. We're back in church now. Amen. Are you glad we're back in church? Amen. Amen. Where are we? I was getting, okay, never mind. Notice it says, okay, the attitude, you know, the attitudes, now listen to me carefully. The attitudes, in other words, of those two individuals, the glory, if you will, and the puffed up, ain't helping. Right. Not helping. Sure. I'm going to take something right now. A lot of times that's where church members are at. You're not helping. Yeah. You're not helping in this situation. Mm -hmm. With your attitude towards the whole thing, mm -hmm. or the idea about the actions, in other words, how you're, how you're handling the situation. Okay, so that's kind of what we're dealing with here. I want to show you how this thing kind of unfolds and does, if you will, okay? We we'll appreciate that. Uh, Brother, Brother Miller, would you see if there's anybody out there? If there is, Brother Miller, Brother Miller, then have them come in and sit down with you, please. Uh, so the next thing it is we're going to take a look at here is, Lord, some of the attitudes. It says, reported commonly that there's fornication among you and such fornication. It's not so much the English among the Gentiles. It's how bad it was. It says that you're puffed up. There's the thought. You not have a more. That's what that should have been the attitude. Not the idea of my numbers. Well, hey, yeah, well, and that's them. They mean them. Should have mourned something and said, you know what? That's wrong. It most assuredly is. That is wrong. Right. That's wrong. Okay? So I think it's important for us to realize and understand what we're talking about here. The idea, they should be mourning over such things like that being in the church. If you think so, say amen. amen. See, if you're not careful, in other words, you're going to be a part of the problem, not the solution. Yeah. That's the idea where we have to be very, very careful about. It says you, that he had done, done this deed might be taken away from among you. Now, that's an action, isn't it? That's not just an attitude. That's an action. Mm -hmm. yeah. That this person, my friend, is not going to, not going to do right. What should happen to them? What does the Apostle Paul say? What does he say? They should be taken away from among you. That means, how many of you know that's not only attitude, guess what that is? That's action also. Get them out of there. Let clearly people know that there is, this ain't right. And we're not going to stand for it or anything else on that line. See, one of the biggest problems is, oh, by the way, one of the biggest problems is that I find others are working with, doing with, and dealing with people. It's the idea about the words, you know what, there's too many hypocrites in the church. Is this true or not? Yeah, true. Well, that's interesting. Why would they say such a thing? Why would they say such a thing? Could it be the idea that the words that we're allowing junk, yeah. in other words, of garbage like that to go on, not dealt with, not in any way, shape, form, or fashion? Well, of course, I got an answer for them. I really do. I'd soon sit in church with a hypocrite. I would sit in hell with them because that's where they're going, just in case somebody don't know. Invite people back to do what? He told me to remind you the one that left. To invite him back. Yeah, okay, we'll invite you back. Whatever that means. I'm not really sure. Okay? Alright. So let's see if you will be a little bit further with the idea about hypocrites in the words of the church. How many of you know there's a certain that's a valid situation? And the reason is wrong attitude. Y'all get me saying? 
What else? Wrong actions. Wrong actions. We're not doing this that kind. And I say we, I'm just talking about this as a, as a whole, if you will. Uh, I, that's just what this idea about trying to correct this thing. He says, very, if I be absent in body, present in spirit, the, the apostle Paul, I've judged already. How I many know there's a lot of judgment going on in this, in this, in this, in this uh, a lot of judgment going on. Oh, oh by the way, we're having trouble with the air conditioning also. Please, it will be fixed in the words. Uh, Tuesday, I guess, or something along that line. Sorry about that. Apologize for that. It says, being asked, he said, judge of, he said, well, there's a lot of judgment going on here. Yeah, it is. He says, he's judged already. Is that what it says? Yes. By the way, you ever hear those people say, judge not lest you? He you realize the words, the people that say that don't have a clue, don't have a clue, if you will, over to what they're talking about. They don't know what the Bible says about judgment, apparently. We're supposed to be judging a righteous judgment. I'll give you a list later on if you'd like to have one. I got it on my on my phone. But how many know the idea about judge not lest you be judged? In other words, is all they're trying to do is in other words, get out of get out of other words their 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 heat, their problem, if you will. That's what they're trying to get out of. Right. Just in case you're wondering, you say, well, what do you mean? There's a lot of judgment. In other words, in the middle of the words, this passage of scripture. Well, let's just go ahead and go on down. I think I'll go ahead and take a take a look at it. Uh, it says. Um, Again, we're talking about judgment. He says, for what I have to do, for what have I, Paul, the Apostle Paul, to do to judge them also that are without? Do, do not ye judge them that are? Well, that's an interesting thought, isn't it? So is that passage of Scripture making the statement the Apostle Paul has already judged on what now? What he heard, just in case you're wondering. Hearsay. Hearsay. Do you hear me? On hearsay. We'll deal with that in just a little bit, a little bit more as far as that goes. So he's already made a judgment. So now, what is he telling the that church to do? Judge, judge who you're supposed to judge. To judge the wrong. It says judge the words those it is that are within. That's exactly what it says. Of course, God's going to judge those that are without. And then those of you know verse number 13, last phrase. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. It's not the idea of the verse. You say, well, are you talking about being mean to somebody? No, I'm not talking about being mean. Not by no stretch of the imagination. I'm, what I'm talking about the idea is dealing with this thing rightfully and properly. And the, how many of you the idea of dealing with something rightfully and properly is simply, in other words, just biblically, that we're showing these people, my friend, where this is they're at and how the situation is. And let them know clear cut beyond a shadow of a doubt that, in other words, that they are going to end up being a stumbling block. They are going to end up, if you will, causing people, in other words, to end up, in other words, dying and going to hell. Notice if you go to verse number six, it says, Your glory is not good. Now there's a glory. Can you imagine, in other words, actually somebody glorying in this nonsense, and somebody committing some kind of an act of sexual or immorality or fornication, and then they're glorying, if you will, in this, in this whole thing? I, that's, I'm a little bit bothered by that. The only thing is that I can think of is somebody, and listen to me very carefully, somebody in that church begin to start to believe the verse, it, it didn't make a difference how you live. Once you did, you say, Apparently, you're going to be say. You say, well, why do you say that? Well, apparently, the Apostle Paul had to check that nonsense in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 9 and 10. He had to let them know, don't you know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? No, you're not. In other words, and he gives a list, if you will, of catalog of sins. You want to take a look at it right quick, just in case? Mm -hmm. Here's the glory as far as I'm concerned. If you don't think people are not glorying in the idea that, yeah, that's the grace of God. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're living like the devil, but they're going to end up in heaven whether they like it or not. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't go to hell if they wanted to. Well, don't sit there and think, in other words, that's not the way people think. You're crazy. That's right. You got Charles Stanley, in other words. If, if you want to, get on get on, on YouTube, <coughs> put Charles Stanley up by the term of security. He'll let you know clearly that people live like the devil still go to hell. Mm -hmm. Great glory. And by the way, we're going to be doing a thing here, and I want you to be looking forward towards it, the idea of a thing. He, he suffered fools gladly on our website. And I'm going to blow apart, in other words, the nonsense if you will, a whole bunch of people, in other words, that uh, we're glor that we're suffering fools gladly, if you will, and we're putting them out there on Facebook and everything else on that line, set there with little memes and what have you that they say, and you're sitting there and you're advertising those individuals, like C.S. Lewis, Charles Hatton Spurgeon, and such and what have you on that line. What are you going to do when they start to find out what else, in other words, does people believe? This is what we're talking about. So this is the idea. Well, let me show you right there. I think we're going to deal with this just a little bit more. 
chapter 6 and verse number 9. Apparently they had a problem with this. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Well, why does he say know ye not? Could it be the idea that the verse know ye not means the idea, don't you get it? Don't you, don't you understand? Don't you know this? Who in the world got a hold of you to get to the point, in other words, it is all of a sudden now, in other words, it's okay. Then he goes on, be not deceived. Would that mean he's believing that somebody is being deceived? deceived? Could it be that? How about the idea of it says neither fornicators, that's the number one thing we're dealing with and talking about, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate. And by the way, that word effeminate is taken out, if you will, in some modern translations, just so it might help somebody else along the line. Well, by the way, that's another thing. But Paul, uh, listen to me for a second. Make sure it is that we deal with uh, uh, the thing about the Bible versions. How the idea people are going to go to hell on this Bible version thing. We'll deal with that a little bit later on because it said if you add to, you take away from it. Right. Your, your, your names will be taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Right. When you sit there and you judge the idea that that word should not be in there, you just took away. Yeah. So just in case you're wondering how this thing goes. So if you would, uh, uh, make sure to listen as we deal with that. He says either fornicators or idolaters or adulterers or effeminate or abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous. Uh, that right there, the word covetous, again, is a, a really a problem in America, Christian, American Christianity. Yeah. Uh, people in the middle of covetous says something fierce and don't even know it. Right. And the reason is somebody won't preach on it, won't teach on it, won't explain it, won't illustrate it or anything else on their life. And people find themselves over some covetousness and think seriously the idea that they're still all right with God. Nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But aren't you glad that such were some of you? Amen. Come on. Aren't you glad, in other words, you don't have to stay there? Amen. That you don't have to live there? Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. Right? amen. You're sanctified. You're washed. You're sanctified. Justified in the name of the Lord. Let me go back. Um, okay. Let me go back on this one thing. By the way, about this glory, you're not good. Know you not that a little leaven, what does it say? Amen. See, I don't know about you, but you know what somebody ought to be told? And by the way, Sometimes it falls back on a pastor all the time, which don't get me wrong. It's not that I won't take care of business. I'll, I'll take care of it. I really will. But sometimes, in other words, it might be good coming from some other folks. Right. Uh, might be good, if you will, coming from somebody. In other words, just uh, uh, the idea about in the context of this is the idea that we're all one mind, one accord. Oh, that reminds me right quick. Just to show you the idea of this hearsay thing. This hearsay thing. Can I deal with that right quick? Yeah. Go to chapter 1. If you will, the first Corinthians. I'll show you a whole lot of hearsay. In verse number what? Verse number 10. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says that you all speak, what does it say? Same. Can I tell you what the problem is with the church of the living God today? Yeah. We're not all saying the same thing. We're not all saying the same thing. Somewhere along the line, in other words, there's a division. Somewhere along the line, there's there's a, a disunity, if you will. That's that's part of the problem. Yeah. If you think God is going to bless that mess, you're out of your ever loving mind. Right? And there's just no getting around it. He says that there that there be no divisions among you. He says, but that you be perfectly. I love that word, perfect. Perfectly, in other words, joined together in what now? Mind. The same mind and also what? The same judgment. Apparently, in other words, they weren't all the same judgment. So why else would you glory in that thing? Why in the world would you be puffed up about that? Right. But apparently, in other words, there's some kind of problem there. We're not in the same. The, 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 not, they weren't in the same mind. And that's why it goes back to the idea. Let me go back to it. He makes a statement there. It says, man, I love this part. I love this program. It says, he says, though you're not that a little leaven, leaven the whole lot. How about you telling them? If you're not careful, your mom and dad's going to go to hell. Yep. Your grandma and your grandpa's going to go to hell because of the way that you live and claim to be a Christian in other words, not, not living right. Your brothers are going to go to hell. Your sisters are going to go to hell. Your aunts and your uncles are going to go to hell. Your brothers and sisters are going to go to hell. Your family's going to go to hell. Your friends are going to go to hell. See, somewhere along the line, somebody needs to put their feet to the fire. And let them know clear cut and I'm shouting out that the happiness that they're living is not going to be, in other words, they're not going to end up being right. Not going to do it. Not at all. 
And that needs to be the same mind of the whole church to start to finish. And you don't have to be a jerk about it. You don't have to be mean about it or anything else on that line. Like last night uh, when we were here, there was a guy wanting money and he like, I'm going to provide for alcohol. Well, he's been told all of his life that it's because of grace he's saved and nothing he can do will change it. Kind of like, well, yeah, I said, you're supposed to repent and turn from that sin, not live in it. Well, no, I'm, I'm, by grace, I'm saved. I'm saved by grace. And that's all he kept saying as he walked away. That's right. See, that's a classic example. I, I didn't know if you heard that or not, but the miller made the statement that somebody was going to want some money. And he, up front, made the statement that he wanted for alcohol because he's going to go ahead and drink because he's saved by grace. Yeah, there's grace for you right quick. In the mind of some people like that, he's glorying in that nonsense. Right. He's puffed up about it. Right. Somebody ought to say amen right here. This is the idea that if you don't think that this is not the way to say it, but you're crazy. That, that leaven, if you will, my friend, leaven the whole of the word is he was at, and he's got part of it as far as that goes. Yeah. No getting around. Is anybody getting this thing? Yeah. So that's the idea. That's why it said purge out, therefore, that old leaven. You know what the Jews did? When it comes to the verse of their, 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 their feast of unleavened bread, you know what they do? Listen to me very carefully. They would take every single vessel that ever had leaven in it, and they'd take it outside. And what they do is, is they would utilize vessels, if you will, that had never had leaven in it. Mm. And utilize that during, in other words, that seven-day period. You want to know why? Because they wanted to obey the Lord like they're supposed to. And my friend, those of you that did that, I mean, you know that's the way to do it. You know the same thing. Or the idea of, oh, it's just kind of marched up a little bit. Uh, uh, I don't know if there's going to be leaven in there or not. Come on. Right. You all get this thing? This is what it is he's dealing with the verse in this, in this context. And then that's why he talks about the feast of eleven and what have you. And he talked about the idea. Uh, he said, I, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to keep company with for fornicators. He said, I told you so. Mr. Grace, we're talking about here, the one who preached the world on grace, that anybody in the Bible start to finish, maybe if you will, yea, all combined together. This is the Apostle Paul wrote 14 books of the New Testament. We're talking about he's the true preacher of grace. He did tell them over and over again. He did tell them over. Grace does say, I told you so. Yeah. Now, if you need more verses on that, I'd be glad to give it to you also. Because somebody put a little mindless little meme or message the idea that grace in the verse doesn't, uh, doesn't say, I told you so. Uh, yeah, it does. Grace does say, I told you so. Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ is full of grace and mercy. Did he say, I told you so? He most assuredly did. He said, I told you so. I want to apologize to for the air conditioning. Uh, we're working with that, trying to get that thing going. Um, just let folks know, we may be a little uncomfortable today and tonight, so if you will, sorry about that. Sorry about that. It's going right now. Okay, well, it's going to be I'm probably going off and on. So anyway, so just about to let you know. Okay, where was I at before I really interrupted myself? Grace, uh, grace, grace does tell you I told you so, just in case you're wondering. Let me go a little bit further here. Remember what we're looking for now. Listen to me very carefully. I don't know about we're dealing with the idea, we're talking about attitude. I mean, attitude, the verse, says a lot. Yes. And the idea that we're man being pan being around with this whole thing, soft soap in it, and what have you like that, how many of you know that will help? Right. Yes. Sometimes it takes an out and out double grade they rebuke. That's why preaching is supposed to be, he said, uh, preach, uh, the word, begins to see reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering, die. Train the wizards. No. Do not careful. Doctrine. For a time's going to come, they're going to hear, they're going to endure sound doctrine. That's right. They're going to heap themselves teachers having itching ears. Yes. By the way, itching ears. <laughs> I got, a, I got a, some statistics that Brother Paul helped me with as far as that goes about who is watching, who ain't watching. Of course, if you're not watching, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> and then those it is, in other words, that watch others. So, that's the idea. That's the idea about watching others. Are they reproving, rebuking, exhorting, with all long suffering and doctrine? Or in other words, are they just one of those teachers that graduated from itchy, itchy you? Are they the words that are tickling the words your ears? You need to ask yourself the question. I don't know about you, but the words, I've been watching other people myself. I believe I've been watching myself. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm watching other people also. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see a lot of reproof, rebuke, exhorting. 
well, exhorting, most people say, well, exhorting is encouraging, isn't it? Yeah, that's one side of it. It's the idea of others encouraging me if you really idea of others to live right. Yeah. Do it right. With all long suffering and doctrine, not hearing much doctrine on the words teaching and preaching either. Yeah. So what is it? Is teachers having itching ears, telling people after their own lusts, yeah. they're going to hate themselves, teachers having itching ears. Yeah. Now, oh, I just love to hear so and so what hang on that line. You live in the God is a snake things to love hearing. I mean, no, if you love hearing somebody, you live in like um, God is a snake. There's something wrong with who you're hearing just in case you That's right. It's nothing but the do, 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 do. <laughs> what is that called? Cheerleading is all it is. It's all nothing but cheerleading. How I many you know that's not, we don't need cheerleading. Right. Right. A little bit. Make sure you're up there, John. A little bit, make sure you're close on. That's what the, that's what the, Windshield wipers are going to be in there. In the parking lot. I, I, I've kind of looked forward to that to some degree. To some degree. <laughs> I was going to see what you guys would do when I hit a good point like that over here. <laughs> you say, well, I'm just not that outgoing. I'm going to flash your lights. Okay. Okay, for a <laughs> Oh, then the other, how about the other sins? Just in case you talk about this all about fornication, you know, it's not take a look if you will uh, at uh, at the the, the list he said that he had uh, that goes right along with fornication. Verse eleven, covetous. Remember I talked to you about that idolater or railer. Uh, it says uh, railer or drunkard or extortioner was such a one. No, I need. Come on, anybody get this thing? And then when we talk about that, for what am I to judge them that are without? Do not judge them that are with. You do realize there are people don't like that. Right. This judgmental thing like that. That's right. I don't know about you, but I, I think seriously, uh, well, what was, what was the other thing I was going to do? Oh, this hearsay thing. Can I, can I go back to a hearsay thing right quick? Go, go to, you say, well, this hearsay thing, is it really that big of a deal? Yeah, it is. But let me see if I can show you how big of a deal it is. In 1 Corinthians, if you will, on hearsay or on the same book, if you will, chapter number 11, I want you to take a look at verse number 18. That's what it says. First of all, the Apostle Paul said, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be, what does it say? That there be what? <laughs> that there be divisions among you. Now, I, I got a question to ask you. Once again, it's going back to the idea about hearsay. Is that true or not? Yes. It also surely is. Help me out over here. It'll, it may not go faster, but you'll help me go faster. Maybe. So then I gotta go back to the idea. So this is hearsay, right? Yeah. It is hearsay, right? Yeah. Well, that's the idea. See, I got people make make a mistake with the idea that, you know, I just don't know if I wanna be, I wanna be one of those kinds that is in order to tell us off on somebody. Well, so so you're helping hide it? Are you aiding and abetting known spiritual criminals? You don't like that in the in the normal realm, do you? No. Do you? Aren't you glad somebody stands up, in other words, and tells off on somebody so that somebody can be something can be done and taken care of? Right. Or, or, or are we so stinking worldly that we can't come up with the idea of well, I'm gonna be a I'm gonna be a rat. I'm gonna be a rat. You know when you hear that nonsense at? In the world. In the world, in the streets and what have you on that line. Right. Come on. You right. say, well, what if it's not true? Okay, I guess we can find out, can we? If it ain't true, I can apologize, you can apologize, everybody can apologize. Well, then we find somebody that's been lying about somebody. Then we go after them. Right. You can get it after those of Israel, the city of Israel, liars. Right. They're not telling the truth, you get that nonsense straight out there. Because a lot of them hell is fast as anything else with them. Come on, busybodies. I mean, you know, that, that group ain't too good of a group either. He said that there's, there'd be divisions. Oh, yeah. And also, the first division came over to the idea, I'm of a Paul, I'm a Paul, I'm, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, come on, I'm of Christ, right? That's, that's, that's the idea, in other words, who you'd rather listen to on mine. Yes. It's actually who it is you'd rather have as pastor, if you will. That's what it boils down to. I heard Brother Haynes tell years ago about the idea that he had said, 
that he talked about the idea he was a pastor to a certain group of people or family or something along that line. I said, what do you mean, you're a pastor? He said, no, their pastor's back in Oklahoma. He said, he's back in Oklahoma. And every time I learn something, every time I say something, every time I do something, every time I burp, or anything else along that line, they're calling back there to find out numbers whether it is that's what should have been done or not. And whatever they say, that's how it goes. So the Apostle Paul was fighting the same thing, if you will, my friend, that probably is around today. It's just too bad we're stuck with so-and-so. Oh, if we had brother so-and-so, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it just be great? I'm a Paul. I'm a Apollos. I'm a Cephas. And then all of a sudden, the bold would say this, I'm a Christ. I don't care in other words what anybody says. I'm going to do what the Lord says. Good, that's why. That's why the Apostle Paul said, "Be ye followers of me, as I follow Christ." He said it once. The rest of the time, he said, "Be followers of Him and His evangelistic teaching." Just in case you're wondering, he said, "I partly believe it." Well, then he said, "I partly believe it." That means he didn't believe everything. And by the way, you tell me something. Guess what? I'm not gonna believe everything until I find out, for a matter of fact, in no uncertain terms. You know, do you think that that's well worth the idea of, by the way, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you, if you don't say something and your kids find out about that nonsense, you do realize the idea. They're going to wait till the day comes, the idea that they, they can get out of here. They're going to get out of here so fast that they do a head spin. Right, right. There's just no getting around it. I mean, there's no getting around that nonsense. That's what they're looking for. They don't want to be part of them. some type of hypocritical situation as far as they go. That's why this thing needs to be cleansed on a regular basis. He said, in verse number 19, he says, For there must also be heresies. The word heresy means false doctrine, false teaching. There's going to be heresies among you that they which are approved may be manifest among you. They're going to rise up right in the midst of you, aren't they? They're going to start telling you the idea that there's this ain't, this is nothing wrong with this. There ain't nothing wrong with this. Ain't nothing wrong with this. Now, if you think there's this, I'm not, I'm not telling the truth. Uh, I can get you a bunch of families and people and individuals in this church, if you want to, if you want to call me on it, you please do. I'd be glad to. Right. That there is how people like this right here that has brought false teaching and false doctrines, uh, standards, stuff like that, have ruined, in other words, some of your family as far as that goes. Right. They're just simply just no getting around it. And those that have had people that, in other words, that have ruined your families, in other words, preaching heresy or false doctrine, uh, just can you just give me a thundering, in other words, amen here? And say, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, buddy. We'll all do it together because we want to be of one mind, one accord, and all that. Like that. If you've had somebody, in other words, tell, in other words, your family, you or whatever else like that, in other words, to get away from what it is we believe here, say amen. Amen. Whoa. How about you watching right now? Could you say the same thing? And by the way, I'm going to tell you something right now. Please challenge me on this. And I'll line up person after person, family after family, individual after individual that has been, if you will, ruined, if you will, by people, my friend, that don't believe what we believe any longer here. Right. Okay. There must also be heresies among you. Well, it shouldn't be very long. As soon as we find out, my friend, some... State raises their head up saying something. How many of those? What, 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 what should we do with this thing? Cut it off. Huh? Okay. What, what should we do with it? Does that look weird? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Cut its head off. That's right. Do what? Cut its head off. That's right. Wrong. And you, know what? you don't have to worry about it no more. That's right. That's right. This idea about <laughs> popping it. How many of you know you just going to make them bad? Yes. That's that new cut the head off. You ain't have to worry about it. Mm. Just right. get away from the head. <laughs> he said that they may be approved because they're looking for approval. By the way, just in case you're wondering about people that there was a don't believe like it is we do, one of the first things they're looking for is approval. Guess who they're going to try to find you that first? Can anybody tell me? Stop, stop, stop. Raise your hand. Don't bark at me. Yes. People that left here. Okay. Now let's go first of all. What's first of all? Where are they going? Where are they going to get approval at first of all? Right here, first of all. They're looking for approval right here. Well, and all of those of you that like everything everybody says, can I tell you right now? You're not helping. Right. You're not helping. You're approving that. They're waiting for somebody from this church 
to like something in other words it is that they say because you just gave them approval, approval. Right. you just gave them approval. come on folks the, what's funny you guys don't like this stuff was it better just watching <laughs> Yeah, I didn't have to look at it. You weren't looking at it? <laughs> yes? Well, I've got a question about that. As it says here, that they which are approved, who are they coming to? Are these people who are in the church, are they looking for approval from upstanding everybody? Yeah, they're looking for approval. They're looking for approval from anybody, first of all. Right. And then what they're going to do is they're going to move from to that's why disgruntled people, I mean, they get together real fast. They don't take long. They just got like, they got a magnet on it. That's right. That's what they're looking for. Then what they're going to do is they'll say to the church and say, hey, do you know anybody else that feels like we do? That's right. Huh? Do you know anybody else that feels like we do? Now, I love, I love so-and-so. I want you to know that. I just love them. But... And then here it goes. So this is how to say, they're looking for approval. Now, once they get enough approval, watch this. If they don't get enough approval, watch this. If they don't get enough approval, what, what's going to happen? They're going to go to the people that left here for their approval. There you go. That's the idea. But they're going to find their approval someplace. Whether it's here, that's where they like it at, first of all. These are the divisions, just in case you're not getting it. Right. You're not connecting the dots. This is the division. They won't start it here. Right. If they can't, what are they going to do? They're going to go someplace else and they're going to find those things that will give them the okay. approval for this, first of all. Now watch this. But then they're going to look for approval further. In other words, they're, they're further in, away from this situation. Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Oh. We have about three minutes to go. So I need to fight real, real fast, real, real hard in the last three minutes. That's what the UFC does. <laughs> it means it's about over with. <laughs> Just kidding, Paul. Just kidding, Paul. I'm not going to win. You all look like a. No, you could be a little bit of a dentist. Okay, never mind. <laughs> well, you look like you win anyway. How about that? It says, when you come to get that point in the one place, is this not the eat the Lord's Supper? Remind me, this is where I asked why I have a roll back to the same again. Please, would somebody please remind me where I'm at? Why I preach this thing again? So we so can go to the actions and wait for the attitude. The Lord's Supper, how I many you know that's serious? So, this idea about division, what have you, gives me, my friend, bringing forth sin and problems and real heresies, false doctrines, and others in the church. You realize, my friend, there's where it is. People are going to end up dying going to hell about that. Them taking the Lord's Supper unworthily, not being right with the Lord. Now, that's a little bit further in our text. And so I'll just give it to you right quick. Um, and it talks about being drunk and what have you on that line. And that's the idea about, uh, uh, the idea about uh, uh, social drinking as far as I'm concerned uh, in, in the context of this whole thing. Um, the idea of... Um, can you imagine a bag of milliliters? Either you're going to hell or you're going to hell. That's what social drinking comes down to, in case you're wondering. Right. If you get one one drink over the line or one right. toke, uh, yeah. well, okay, is that true or not? Yeah. It's like the idea. It's milliliters. Right. If I drink the words just for the right amount, that's what they believe, not me. Right. The idea of numbers I'm going to heaven. If I if I go one milliliter over and I move off into buzz, right. because remember, buzz living is drunk living. See the, uh, the video, if you will, on our, our website. That's what we're dealing with here. Because the scriptures talk about that alcohol is deceptive. Yes. It says wine is a mockery. That's right. Strong drink is rage. That's right. And whosoever, in other words, is deceived thereby, thereby, thereby is not wise. That's right. I mean, you know, there's a deception that will take you from one heaven, heavenly milliliter yes. to a hell right. milliliter. Which is the most ridiculous thought you could ever be imagined. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to let y'all go. Pray for the services that you would. We appreciate that. Yes.
How many glad to be back in the church? Amen. 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 Good to have you folks. I appreciate that. I made a statement earlier. I uh, made a statement earlier. The idea about I really didn't. I really didn't really much care for you guys uh, back in the day. But since you guys been gone, I'm finding out. I just love you guys. Something's fierce. So glad you're here today. Okay, you guys say amen. 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 You're the citizen.